hey, it's later. It's the next day for you. It's about two minutes, maybe three. Let me drink a drink here, kombucha. This is turmeric and ginger and something else from Better Booch. It's pretty good. Okay, motor mounts. These I know are bolt to the block. I got the short, stumpy motor mounts because I wanted to see short stumps. Frame mount, this side, okay, so yeah, this way. So I wanted to see, yeah, see? This is the mount it was made for. See how that pad sits on that pad right there? That's it, and the hole lines up. Can you guys see that? Get to the camera. I'll figure out where the camera is on this phone and you guys will I'll make it a lot better. That's what we're doing. Wow, I'm burping up a storm today. Sorry about that, because I know you can hear it. Uh, sorry. Sorry, kids. Don't do what your Uncle Brant does. Don't be a bad influence on children. Okay, so. Oh, great. This bolt that came with this kit is a hair too short, but I'm pretty sure if I use a big enough hammer and I smash this, or C-clamp, I can get this to fit on here. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna convince this that it needs to go on. I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, you guys have all seen motor mounts go on. But what you haven't seen is how to put this frame mount on. So, essentially, it slides in here. Sits on the frame like so. Slides into this motor mount. Bolt. And then I'll get the impact. And we'll run her down just a thread or two because it just seems like the right thing to do here. This could get ugly. That nut doesn't feel like it wants to go on. No, it does. Let me start it here with my fingers. There we go. Okay. 5 eighths and 11 sixteenths or 18 millimeter. I'm just gonna run her down here. A little bit of a pinch, so it's still got some slop. So what we're looking at is, where exactly on the frame do I want to put this? Do I want to put it there or there? So here's the deal. In the instructions, it says clearly there will be a gap. Some air gap and, and stuff is totally natural. Um, that's great. So it's sitting on these mounts right now, these front mounts. If you can see those, I don't know if you can. Let me get you up here. Hold on a second. Hold on. Okay, these front mounts, and now these side mounts. There is nothing wrong with me saying, hey, we should leave both mounts on there. Hold on, I'm bumping you around on stuff. I totally could do that. Four, so it would be like five mounting points. I don't know if that's like, you know, super unkosher or what, but um, I have no problem with it. The stability is, you know, there. I'm tempted to jack it up, take those other mounts out of the center, and let that thing settle and see where it sits. Um, it'll drop my nose down. Right now I have it at four degrees. So the core support sits at four degrees this way, and the engine is sitting at four degrees, which is what the um, assembly man factory assembly manual for the car uh, states it should be so Do I want it four or do I want it three? I think I'd like to keep it where it is So I can always 
mount that and it, that it has some slot and that mount has a slot you know the slide mounts and i have those shims that go underneath there i can always shim this thing up as far as i want and put it where i want it um and that's a pretty good air gap it says in the instructions i'll read them to you are you ready who doesn't like reading a story Part 871, Conversion Kit, from Dan Chuck. Instruction Sheet, Revise 9 of 2010. You are now ready to lower the engine and weld the mounts to the frame rails. There will be a small gap between the bracket and the frame rail. This is normal. Watch for obstructions such as brake lines, fuel lines, etc. before welding. Most headers can be used, blah, 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 blah. Um, and additional information concerning various configurations using these mounts can be found in back issues of Hot Rod Magazine dated November 1986 and May 1988. May 1988. I would have been 8th grade, freshman year. These mounts, that mount design is that old. That explains a lot. Um, congratulations. Let's start from, the start from the beginning. Congratulations on the purchase of your side engine mount, engine side mount kit. Dan Chuck has designed these mounts for strength, easy installation to fit both frames, which they are both frames. The double C's, which this frame is, or the one piece everybody calls California. But actually, fun fact. I think like 90% of 1956 Chevys had that one piece frame, but they call them California or NASCAR. But, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, it says California, <laughs> fit both frames, California, the other 49 states. I, uh, 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 whatever. They might be right. I don't think they are. These engine mounts are exclusively designed for 58 and later blocks, so they'll fit both small block and big blocks. They will weld easily to any frame. To find the correct frame location for the mounts, height, front to rear measurements, use L-shaped engine brackets. If you don't have the stock brackets, don't worry. There's another way to, to figure out the placement of the mounts. Uh, continue to follow instructions listed hereafter. What are we in, like the 1800s? Hereafter. However, before final welding, to ensure you will have fan, valve cover, and linkage clearance requirements. Um, modification of the vehicle in any, in any way may require corresponding alterations to other systems in order to achieve desired performance and necessary safety. We recommend that you seek professional advice or assistance with any modifications. Um, that's true. And do you see any professionals here? No. So we're winging it, folks. We're winging it. What did I learn by reading those instructions? Not much. Not much more than we already know. Um, fairly simple. I mean, I like them. I like this setup. I like this set, side mount setup. Um, also, yep, that's a lava lamp. No, you can't have it. I finally put that up. And they, these aren't too bad. That was pretty bright in there. The, the light's not too bad right there. Lights. Um, yeah. So, let's see. Decision time. Decision time, decision time. I'm going to do some more measurements and put this stuff in here and uh, think about tacking this up. Decision time. Actually, the decision's been made for me in my brain. I'm going to jack the motor up, pull the front mounts off, set it on the frame and see how it sits. Um, I'm going to show you how to take these front mounts off. It's pretty easy. There's a hole in the bottom of the frame. You saw the way the top ones look. Come with me, come. Let's look. Okay, oh, see, don't have a seizure. Okay, so that stud right there, there is a corresponding hole like I said there earlier. Same on this side. Underneath is the exact same thing as what that looks like. Um, that big washer right here, this washer, has a, um, 
I guess a step in it that fits perfectly in that hole. And then that shock mount bushing thing mounts up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull that up, jack this thing up so it sits still where it is, pull these mounts off, all this fun stuff, get it off there, and then set her down and see how those fit in the frame. I realized earlier I didn't take this far enough because the camera's right there. So I need to get it right there. So you see that? I'm gonna set it down and then see how the motor sits and where it goes because that's like a quarter inch gap and I would feel better about having a plate in there to weld it to the frame. But um, I have to get some quarter inch plate to do that. What I'm probably gonna do is just set that in there and see where they settle against the frame and where they end up going. I'll bang them around or whatever and see where that sits. And uh, I'll check the degree with my handy degree thing. And uh, yeah, we'll see if it drops. If it's like three degrees between three and four, I'll be happy. Three is three is most cars, Chevy. these Chevys are four degrees. I told you that earlier. There'll be a test. So yeah, I'm gonna get the jack slide in there, pick it up, take them off, uh, drop it down and let you guys see what it looks like. Do you, unless you really wanna, you don't wanna watch me take those mounts off. It's like zing, zing, they fall out, done. Um, okay, see you in a bit. All right, like I said, motor mount, see that washer, that hole? Goes right in that recess perfectly. Same as the bottom. Bottom top have the same setup. And then sandwiches it together. It's just, it's awesome. It's just a great, great design. Um, anybody that's interested, these are brand new. They've only been used to mock it up and start it. Uh, by the way, the motor needs to sit on its new mounts now. So let's watch that happen. Shall we? Okay, let's watch it. All right, she's ready to come down. I had to take the mechanical fuel pump off and uh, see what happens here. Here we go, ready? Coming down slowly, hopefully. This jack likes to drop. Here we go. She's down. And she's home. And she's home. I don't mind that. That actually looks pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Let me get the light on there. She's down. There's a little bit of an air gap, equal on both sides. I could weld the top of that and then put a filler plate in there. Yeah, that's not bad. She's um, she's down and looks like she's mostly centered. I think it needs to go over towards this side. Maybe, maybe not. Pretty, pretty even. Let me get my angle finder and level and stuff and I'll, I'll pull you out of there and we can look at it. See, just zero degrees. So the car's level, that thing's at zero degrees, which is pretty cool. That's what it should be, zero, zero. So um, I think I'm gonna keep it in there where it is. Uh, and then I'm gonna check this side one here in just a second. Four degrees. That's how we like it. That's what the radiator's at. This thing's right at four. Three and a half, four. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna um, end this video here because I got some prepping to do to that before I grind it and weld it. But uh, yeah, that's it for today. Um, Yeah, yeah. I, this could be like an hour long video if I did 
all of it together. But I don't want you guys to miss anything because putting these motor mounts, I think if somebody wants to do this, you need to see step by step. Like just like doing the inner fender wells where it took me 20 videos to get the inner fender wells out. Do you guys want to see that? But you do want to see the motor mounts, right? I thought so. See you guys in a second. Let's sum it up. So here's what happened today. Ah, kombucha. Motor mounts. So far, motor mounts come off. Side mounts are on. It's on its own weight on the frame where it's supposed to be. It is, I'm gonna say, half inch, three quarters of an inch lower than it was, the whole motor. I dropped, had to drop the whole motor down to match. The angle's the same, it looks good. That just means that much less of the blower and carburetor is just sticking out of the hood. Sorry guys, but that's just the way it is. Uh, lower center of gravity is good, but it's in the stock position where it needs to be in the frame. It's also three mounts, solid. Um, I have to prep the frame and everything in those mounts and get all that stuff off and move brake lines on, you know, which I know brake lines. See, I'm glad I didn't finish the brake lines because I finished them and added fluid. I'd be, um, not happy. Maybe some colorful metaphors and, uh, be cleaning up a bunch of, uh, Ooh, lava lamp, cleaning up a bunch of, uh, brake fluid and stuff before I get ready to weld. But this way they're dry. I can just undo them, take them out. Um, get everything cleaned up, mount the mounts on there, and weld around up, and we're set to go. And then that will be the end of the motor mounts, actually. And then the headers can go back on. Um, I do not like the way the hooker super comps on the driver's side is, so the passenger side tucks up nice along with the fender angle. The driver's side is kind of a down a little bit. I'm thinking about doing like a little bendy thing and bend that driver's side one back up, up and back, give it more of a sloped angle like it was. Um, just cause it looks better symmetrically. I don't, I'm not gonna cut the pipes or anything else. I might heat them up and move them and then repaint them again or coat them or something, I don't know, but we'll see. Cause the exhaust is gonna go on here pretty quick with some really quiet mufflers. You know, I've told you this before. I sur I'm gonna surf with this. So firing this thing up at five o'clock in the morning in a neighborhood with kids, you know, the blower belt's going to be loud enough. Everything else got to be fairly quiet. So, you know, it's going to sound good, but I don't want to wake up everybody. Then they don't need to be thinking the space shuttle's landing, you know, or something like that's going on. Um, but yeah, that's where this video is ending right now. Uh, this video is done. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. And I will have prepped this and be in the middle of welding it up, probably. Actually, I think I'm just going to probably weld, prep it up, weld it, and show you what I've done. Because you saw how the motor dropped in on its own, and that's where it's going to stay. So I'll weld it, prep it, or prep it, weld it, and then we'll be on to something else. Question is what? What should I do? Upon further review... The ruling on the play, well, it doesn't stand, it's been changed. So um, I did some checking, just something in the back of my cow vigorous calculations in my chrome magnum brain. Um, I said chrome magnum brain. Chrome magnum man brain, the, uh, I was concerned about, the motor dropped considerably and as I was looking at it, it dawned on me that the uh, fender wheel headers, when they're really close to the steering box, are now uh, on the steering box. There's interference. So I'm going to modify these brackets. Actually, the way they sit in the frame, I'll probably space them up and stuff. So that's not going to happen in this video. Um, or today, actually. Um, two reasons. One, the mosquitoes are biting me. Two, I need to get some material to space that up. So... Um, I'll get some, some, maybe some small, like half by half box or something like that, or some solid spacers, or maybe I can bend those and cut them and re weld them. But uh, I gotta change that. I can't have that. I can't have interference. That means I'll have to raise the tranny back up. Oh well. It is what it is. Um, I just want it right. So 
Um, I really wish they hadn't chopped the frame mounts off this for the rear for the tranny mount for the bell housing because if it had the bell housing mounts and the stock front mounts, man, this would be this would be a lot cooler. I might have to rig the stock mounts back up to space it back up where it was. Actually, I have a jack stand. I could put up and jack it up and brace it and then get it braced up on the oil pan so it doesn't move. I might do that, but I got to think about this. I got a brain on this. So after I said all that, my point is, uh, as far as I can go for today, I don't know what day of the week this is for you guys, but tomorrow we'll have something else going on. See you.